Hi everyone, Shika here with NARD Dojo where we discuss pathological narcissism, personal development, spirituality, and raising your awareness. Today, we are exploring the manipulative technique known as plate spinning and the emotional roller coaster that follows the dreaded discard. Imagine a circus performer skillfully spinning multiple plates on sticks, desperately trying to keep them from crashing down. Well, when it comes to narcissists in relationships, the metaphor is all too real. It is time to uncover the secrets of plate spinning and what happens when the narcissistic show inevitably comes to a startling halt. In today's video, we are going to uncover the psychology behind plate spinning and the emotional fallout of the discard. Additionally, we'll explore the impact on those caught in the narcissistic circus and discuss strategies for breaking free from this toxic cycle. But before we unravel the intricacies of this toxic dance, do remember to click that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on more empowering content, self-improvement tips, and navigating the twists and turns of human behavior. All right, let's get into it. The art of plate spinning. The term plate spinning is more than just a metaphor. It is a manipulative game played by narcissists in the realm of relationships. They are the circus performers and we are the unsuspecting audience. Picture this, a narcissist, charming and charismatic, spinning the plates of various relationships simultaneously. Each plate represents a different person in their life and they are desperately trying to keep them all in motion. Deception is at the core of this act. The narcissist leads each person to believe they're the sole focus of their affections, all while maintaining a complex web of connections behind the scenes. Plate spinners are essentially players, and here are five characteristics of this behavior. Number one, deception. The person engaging in plate spinning is typically not transparent about the existence of other relationships. They may hide the fact that they are involved with multiple people simultaneously. Number two is a lack of commitment. Plate spinners often avoid committing to a single person or may be reluctant to define the nature of their relationships. This lack of commitment allows them to keep multiple options open. Hence, multiple plates spinning at the same time. Number three is a discrepancy in emotional investment. While they might create the appearance of emotional investment in each relationship, the level of emotional commitment is often imbalanced. One or more partners may be led to believe that they are in a deeper connection than what actually exists. Number four is a risk of hurt and betrayal. Plate spinning can lead to emotional hurt and betrayal when the truth is eventually revealed. Individuals who thought they were in exclusive relationships may feel deceived and emotionally harmed. And finally, number five is the transitory nature of these relationships. Relationships based on plate spinning are often short-lived and lack depth. The individual may move on quickly from one partner to another, leaving a trail of broken connections. It is important that you understand that plate spinning is not a healthy or ethical approach to relationships. It can cause significant emotional harm to those involved and erode trust in future relationships. Hence, open communication, honesty, and mutual consent are crucial for building healthy and respectful connections with others. Now, here is where it gets tricky. The discard. And what is the discard? The discard phase is one part of the narcissistic abuse cycle, which is a pattern of behavior often seen in relationships with very emotionally immature individuals. 
Now, I won't go into detail in this particular video about the narcissistic abuse cycle because we are focusing on the discard phase. However, I will link you to a 20 minute video that is already covered on the topic. Additionally, if you want to learn more about abusive dynamics, how to protect your emotional and psychological well-being, consider taking the NARC 101 course. NARC 101 has over two and a half hours of HD lessons where we go in detail to help you to better understand yourself. It also helps you to understand narcissistic abuse, understanding dysfunctional family dynamics, and how to break free from this toxic cycle. So if you want to learn more about the narcissistic abuse cycle, go ahead and watch this full lesson from the NARC 101 course. However, in this video, I will provide you with a quick overview so that we can focus on the discard phase in the cycle and why narcissists actually use this manipulation tactic. So here is an overview. The narcissistic abuse cycle typically involves four phases, and that's going to be idealization or love bombing, devaluation, discarding, and hoovering. In the idealization phase, the narcissist idealizes their victim. This is essentially them putting you on a pedestal. So they will shower you with gifts and attention and affection and praise. This phase creates an intense bond and makes the victim feel valued, special, and loved. Here, the narcissist may seem charming, attentive, and supportive. Next up, we have the devaluation phase. As the relationship progresses, the narcissist's attitude starts to change. They become critical, dismissive, and may engage in more manipulative behaviors. The person who was once idealized is now devalued. So they put you on the pedestal and now they are taking you off. So the narcissist may emotionally or verbally abuse the victim, undermine their confidence and cause a lot of emotional distress. The devaluation is often irrational and not based on the target's actual behavior. Phase number three is the discard phase. And this is where the narcissist decides to end the relationship abruptly or dramatically. This can happen for various reasons, including boredom, a perceived threat to their ego, or the narcissist's pursuit for a new source or sources of supply and admiration. During the discard, the narcissist may completely sever ties with the victim, often without any warning or explanation. They may move on to a new target, leaving the discarded person confused, hurt, and emotionally devastated. Stage number four is hoovering, and this name comes from the popular vacuum company, the Hoover Vacuum Company. So essentially, the narcissist is going to try to drag their victim back into another abusive cycle. Here are four characteristics of the discard phase. Number one is the abrupt ending. The discard phase is marked by a sudden and unexpected end to the relationship. Here, the narcissist may vanish without an explanation or they may provide superficial and unsatisfying reasons for the breakup. Number two is a lack of closure. You should not be looking for closure from a narcissist. Victims of narcissistic abuse often struggle with a lack of closure. The abrupt ending and the absence of a reasonable explanation can leave the discarded person with unanswered questions and a lot of emotional pain. Hence, number three is the emotional impact. The discard phase can have severe emotional consequences for the victim. It may result in feelings of betrayal, confusion, self-doubt, and a damaged sense of self-worth. And number four is cycle continuation. In some cases, more so a lot of cases, the narcissist might return to the idealization phase with the same person after a period of discard, creating a cyclical pattern of abuse. Understanding the narcissistic abuse cycle, 
including the discard phase, is crucial for individuals who have experienced or are currently in relationship with narcissists. Seeking support from a reputable coach, therapist, counselor, or other mental health professional is essential for healing and breaking free from this toxic cycle of abuse. The discard is the heart-wrenching part of the narcissistic performance. Just as the circus performer lets some plates crash to the ground, the narcissist abruptly ends relationships, leaving partners shattered and confused. It is a heartless act that often comes out of nowhere. The once charming partner becomes cold and distant, leaving their unsuspecting victims questioning what went wrong. Next, let's discuss why narcissists discard. Narcissists often discard people suddenly for various reasons, and this really is a reflection of their characteristics and their pattern behavior and how they deal with interpersonal dynamics. So here are seven reasons why narcissists often discard people. And number one is a loss of supply. Narcissists crave attention, admiration, and affirmation from others known as narcissistic supply. When they feel that a person is no longer serving this purpose, they might discard them abruptly. Narcissists are addicts. They are people addicts and they objectify people. So similar to a junkie with a needle, when the drug is done, they simply throw it away. Junkies are not in a healthy state and neither are pathological narcissists. Number two is it's a cycle. In the cycle of narcissistic abuse, after the idealization phase where the narcissist initially idealizes their target, there comes the devaluation phase. During this phase, a narcissist may become critical, dismissive, or hostile towards a person, leading to a sudden discard. Understand that they must discard. This is their pathology. It is just like hours on a clock. After 1 p.m. comes 2 p.m. After 3 p.m. comes 4 p.m. and so on. It is important that you understand that this is not your fault. However, it is their pathology. And understand that when we are talking about pathology, we are talking about patterned behavior, patterned abnormal behavior, because pathology is the study of diseases or disorders. Number three is boredom. Narcissists can easily become bored and seek new sources of excitement and stimulation. Once a person is no longer providing the level of excitement or attention the narcissist desires, they might discard them in search of something or someone new. Number four is a perceived threat to their ego. If the narcissist perceives that the person is becoming independent, questioning their authority, or no longer accepting their manipulation, the narcissist may discard them as a way to regain control and protect their fragile ego. This is what you may hear being called a narcissistic injury. And what is a narcissistic injury? A narcissistic injury is when a narcissist perceives a threat whether real or imagined, that goes against their grandiose sense of self. Hence, if you are not boosting their ego, this may trigger a discard. Number five is a fear of abandonment. Ironically, while narcissists may discard others abruptly, they also fear abandonment. If they sense that someone is pulling away or considering ending the relationship, they might preemptively discard the person to maintain a sense of control. So they want to dump you before you dump them. It is important that you understand that narcissists exist in a fear-based state. They are people that are based in shame and are unable to move past their pride. So you really are dealing with people with very low self-esteem. 
and because they have such low self-esteem, this is why they need so much admiration, attention, and validation from others, and we call this other esteem. You are dealing with people, again, that exist in a fear-based state. So what they try to do is trigger the fear in you. So when they discard you, they hope that you come running back to them to chase them so that they get more attention, admiration, and validation. Number six is a lack of empathy. Narcissists lack empathy and struggle to understand or care about the feelings of others. As a result, they do not consider the emotional impact of sudden discards on the individual. If you think back in Greek mythology, narcissism comes from the character of Narcissus, which was a character that was obsessed with himself. Hence, pathological narcissists care only about themselves, they disregard others. Number seven is idealization of new sources. Narcissists tend to idealize new people they encounter, viewing them as a potential source of admiration, attention, and validation. This can lead them to quickly discard existing relationships in pursuit of new and more exciting connections. Again, you are dealing with a junkie. When a newer drug or a higher dose drug comes around, they must go and test it. It is important to note that the specific reason for a narcissist's sudden discard can vary based on the individual and the circumstances. However, you should not internalize their behavior. Narcissists are highly disordered individuals and they are abusers. Hence, they like to inflict pain and suffering on others because they themselves are suffering and misery loves company. And there you go, folks. That is a wrap for today's deep dive into the world of narcissism. If you found this video insightful or if you've had experiences with these toxic dynamics, share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember, your stories can be a source of support for others going through similar situations. And if you haven't already, ensure that you click that like button to show your support. And if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe for more content on navigating the complexities of human behavior and relationships. Thank you so much for joining us here at NARC Dojo. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay vigilant, stay aware, and I'll see you in the next lesson.